If you're like any of my clients that have their website on Squarespace, you're probably wondering, how do I add a blog post to Squarespace while also keeping SEO in mind? If that's what you're wondering, then you've made it to the right video. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, we're going to hop into a screen share where I'm going to show you how to add a new blog post to your Squarespace website and what kind of things you should keep in mind, especially when it comes to best practices for SEO. So Let's just get into it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is obviously log into your Squarespace website. The screen, their menu might look a little different by the time that you're watching this because we all know that software and website platforms get updated all of the time. But basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to pages and then we're gonna head over to the blog and then we're gonna head over into blog content. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a brand new blog post. So click that plus icon there. And then you're gonna go ahead and enter in your blog post content. So up here, you're gonna enter in your blog post title and then this is where you're gonna paste in your content. You can obviously also write your blog post natively right here in Squarespace. For some reason, I don't like doing that. Most of my clients don't like doing that. So we kind of use Google Docs. And so my clients will usually write out their blog posts in Google Docs, and then we'll kind of move it over to Squarespace and kind of do some updates in terms of styles and formatting and all of that fun stuff. So we'll just go ahead and paste the content in here. As, as you can see, it's adding quite a few blank lines here. We don't want all of that. So we are going to have to do some formatting in order to do this. But basically, I'm going to scroll up. And this is what I do for every single blog post. And I try to have my clients do this too. So you have the blog post content, cool, cool, cool. But like at the top, I always like having SEO information. Okay, so I always like outlining what's the blog post title. If you're creating this blog post with SEO in mind, what's the target keyword that you're trying to hit? And then are there any, any other like secondary keywords or keyword variations that might be a different way of saying this keyword? And so those, we're naturally just gonna call them the secondary keywords. And then we have the URL slash permalink. So this is like what shows up like here. Here's an example here. If we go to mariahmagazine.com, we can see right here that SEO keyword planner, this is the page slug, the permalink, same thing, but it basically has to do with your URL. Like how does a user get to a certain page? Okay, so what we wanna keep in mind here is that words should be separated by dashes, not underscores, and we don't wanna have it all jumbled together like this. Google reads those dashes as spaces so we can see like what words are actually in your URL and your slug and your permalink. And I'll show you where to put this, but basically we kind of just like generate this from the target keyword, the secondary keywords, like what is the main topic of this blog post. And then I also like to craft and create the SEO metadata and that's your SEO title and your meta description. So these are two pieces of metadata that essentially they're not going to be visible on like the front end of the website. Like if a user is reading the blog post, these are pieces of metadata that show up in Google search results. Okay. So when you see things in Google search results, it'll have the big text, which is the SEO title. And then the meta description is like that little uh, excerpt or like snippet that kind of tells you more information about it. The reason why we want to customize these and we don't want to leave it up to Squarespace to customize them is because these pieces of metadata only show up in search engines, basically. And so it's the only thing that a user will see in order to try to decide if they want to click on your blog post or somebody else's. So we definitely 
want to create an SEO title and meta description, if you want more information on how to craft successful SEO titles and meta descriptions, I do have an ebook. And so you can snag that ebook. I will leave a link to it in the video description box below. And you can use the code SEO love 10 for $10 off of that. Okay. But basically I like to outline all of this stuff with the content because then it's just way easier when I'm like going to plug it into Squarespace. Okay. So here is is the content here and we're going to come back and we're going to format that in just a minute but I want to go ahead and put in the blog post title so we're just going to copy and paste it over okay cool and then we're going to like if we want to have an image up at the top here we can go ahead and click this little plus icon and we can choose image and then you can drag and drop an image here you can choose an image from your library you can use stock images totally up to you you can create like a blog post graphic in canva but i will say a couple things to keep in mind make sure you are resizing your image before uploading it to squarespace okay so we don't want 3,000 pixels so wide images we want to resize it to maybe 800 pixels wide is usually pretty good and then we usually don't want to use a png format because most blog post graphics we don't need a transparent background we only usually need a transparent background when you're doing a logo or like a design or brand element and stuff like that and png images with that transparent background or without them but like that png image format is just a heavier image size so so try to have a JPEG image. They're just naturally smaller in image sizes, but you can go ahead and upload an image here. So I'm going to do that. And then once we have that image uploaded, this is going to be the first thing that I really want you to pay attention to is your file name. So this is what you're calling like this image. You maybe want to have your SEO target keyword in here if it makes sense. Sometimes like the file name, it's not as important as the image alt text in my opinion, but spend some time creating create your image alt text. If you can naturally get your target keyword that you hopefully already have outlined here into this image, then cool. We love that. If not, that's okay because image alt text is actually for image accessibility and for screen readers for the visually impaired so that the screen readers can describe what is in the image to somebody that might not be able to see it at all or can't see it very well. So if you want like a video that dives deeper into image alt text, I have a video on my channel. So I will go ahead and link that in the video description box below, but definitely fill out this image alt text here. So I went in and kind of just went ahead and customized the image file name and the image alt text. Cool, we love that so much. You can add a caption if you'd like, if you think that this image needs more context, it's not make or break, but essentially we can come back here and now we want to go ahead and save this. Okay, so we haven't done anything with like formatting yet, but basically we're gonna save it and I'm gonna exit out of here because there's extra settings for SEO that you have to pay attention to. Okay, so basically you can click these three little dots next to the blog post here and then click settings. This is gonna pop up a new box here. You can add the same image that you already added to the front end of your blog post, you can have that be the featured image. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that and then scroll down here. And this is the permalink. This is the, this is the slug. This is the post URL that I was talking about. So automatically it looks like Squarespace is grabbing the title of the blog post here. I'm totally okay with that. That's probably what I what I would have set it at anyways. And then if you need to change the author, you can do that here. You can come down here into options and you can add tags or you can add categories. Keep in mind that tags and categories, they're not like where you dump all of your SEO keywords. That's not how categories and tags work. We wanna use these very strategically in terms of helping your client and helping search engines better understand your content and like what kind of like content bucket this specific blog post falls into. But then we're going to come down here into SEO. This is where you would pop in your SEO title and meta description. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, I went in and put in information here, but they do have a character limit, but the character limit set in Squarespace 
isn't accurate. You actually have less space than they say that you have. So up here, you only have around 60 to 65 characters. And then down here in the meta description, you only have around 155 to 160. So I have a YouTube video that goes through like what is the ideal length and how to check these things because it's actually not by character width, it's by pixel width, but like that's hard to tell in a website platform and stuff like that. So I have a video that dives into how to create the correct length for these two things. So I will leave that link in the video description box below. And then we also have some extra things. We have a social sharing image. If you're sharing this to LinkedIn or Facebook or anything like that, you can upload a separate image if you'd like to. And then you can take a look at these things if they're important to you as well. But the main things that I wanted you to pay attention to were the blog post URL and then this SEO title and meta description because a lot of people skip over this because it doesn't catch your eye very easily in here. But these are extremely important when it comes to optimizing your blog post for SEO. So make sure to click this save button here so everything that you put in there is actually saved. I'm interrupting this video really quick because I created something super awesome and I want to share it with you. So if you need help planning out your SEO keywords for your blog posts, for your product pages, for your homepage, for any page on your website, then definitely check out my SEO keyword planner. It's a five page editable workbook created in Google Sheets that will help you brainstorm, organize data, and strategize your keywords accordingly. I include tips, best practices, and examples to help you get started. Click the link in the video description below to check it out. But the next thing that we're going to do is kind of talk about formatting this content. Like, to be honest, it's kind of fine the way that it is, but I'm going to show you a better version and how it looks after me and my client went in and kind of customized it and formatted it to how we actually wanted it to show up. So this version of the blog post is already optimized for formatting and stuff like that. So basically, I'm just going to take a look at this on a bigger scale just so you can see the difference here. So Something that matters for SEO in like a roundabout way is like how the content is formatted for the user because users don't read content on the web like they do when they're reading a book. They scan content on the web. So when you're creating content and blog posts on your website, you want to make this scannable. You want to have pieces and elements that kind of draw the user's eye in certain places. You want to format it correctly and all of that fun stuff. So you can already see like we have have italics, we have underlines, we're using her brand colors for that. You might have to do some messing around with CSS. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to have a fun underline, but having underlines, italics, bolding things, using headings properly. So this is an H2 heading, I believe. Yes, we see an H2 right here. So basically in your content itself, you only want one H1 heading per blog post. So that means that your blog post title Squarespace automatically puts this in an H1 heading. So we don't want another H1 heading within the content itself. Okay, so if you're going to have headings, you want to use H2s. And if you're breaking down content within the H2, you're going to use H3s. And if you're breaking down content within the H3s, you're going to use H4s. So think about headings like content hierarchy. Okay, but you can see that like, we've bolded some things, we've changed the color of some headings so that as you're scanning your eyes kind of pop there. We added bold here. We fixed some of the line breaks that were showing up when we ended up taking it from Google Docs over to Squarespace. So we cleaned it up a little bit. But as you can see, now this blog post is like way easier to scan and get the information. Okay, so this was really, really well done. And then also another thing is that if you are linking to resources or you're linking to statistics or something like that, if you are linking to a link that is off of your own website, make sure that link opens up in a new tab. So when you click on it, it opens up in a new tab. We don't want it to open up in the same tab because then the user is taken away from your site. Okay, so all of this matters for SEO because Google judges your site on over 200 factors and a lot of them are user experience. So it's like, are people engaged on your website? Are they spending time? Are they scrolling your content? Is your content easy to read? Do they want to read it? And some of those things that come into play is the scannability of your content. 
content. Okay, so that's why I wanted to mention that. And so yeah, we have this, we went back in and added another image, like a graphic that is really, really helpful. I would even probably make this bigger because I can't really see it. So just another user experience thing. But other than that, like this blog post is now well formatted. So after you're ready to publish your blog post, there is one more step that I want you to consider. So after you publish it, open up a new tab and view like the front end URL of your blog post. So you'll see your URL here slash blog and then whatever the permalink is that you kind of put in there. I want you to copy this entire blog post URL, go to Google Search Console and submit this new blog post to Google. I have a video that walks you through the process. It's super, super, super easy once you already have Google Search Console set up. But basically what you're doing is you're kind kind of tapping Google on the shoulder and being like, hey, just a heads up, I have a new blog post on my website, can you go and crawl it? Google will eventually find this blog post, but it's kind of just like, you already created the blog post, why not tell Google that it's a thing sooner than later? And then if you have any questions in terms of like actually SEO optimizing your content, like where to put your keywords and all of that stuff, I will leave another video in the video description box below where I kind of walk you through from the perspective of like, where do you put your SEO keyword when you're trying to optimize a blog post? But hopefully this video was helpful at just showing you the different things and the settings to keep in mind as you're taking a content from a Google Doc and kind of uploading it over to your Squarespace website. So that's it for today's video. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. Truly, the simple thumbs up does go a long way in letting the YouTube algorithm know that my video is helpful and therefore, hopefully pushing it out to more people that also might find it helpful. And if you have any comments or questions, or you wanna see me dive deeper into Squarespace SEO or Squarespace in general for the platform itself, definitely leave me a comment below this video. I use your comments, your questions, and your feedback to inspire new videos for the channel. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you you in the next video. If you made it to the end of this video and you're just getting started with DIY SEO, but you want some help navigating the process, then definitely consider downloading my free roadmap to successful SEO. The free SEO guide dives into what SEO is, why it's important, and how search engines work, along with my six-step process to improving your SEO and your rankings. And then finally, I dive into the three tasks that you can start doing today to get the results that you want from Google. If you want Want to go ahead and snag this for yourself then you can click the link in the video description box below or you can head over to my website at mariahmagazine.com roadmap to download your own copy.